Hi, everyone. This video will show you how to use the AnyCubic Photon Workshop. I'll walk you through the process of using, setting, adding support, and teach some useful tips. And a part of how to add support to get a more perfect model will be shown in the next video. So let's start. First, you need to select your machine type here to ensure that you can get the correct slice file. Okay, there is a toolbar on the left. The first icon means move. You can adjust the XYZ value or hold the left mouse button to move the model. And if you want to observe the model from different angles, you need to hold the right mouse button and drag it. Just like this. Well, this is the rotation. You can change the value or select a different color circle line to manually adjust. And there is also a more accurate method of rotation. You can click to select the value and then scroll the mouse, which will make it easier for you to find the appropriate placement angle. Okay, next, scale, and here is a fit maximum button. Click on it, and the software will automatically help you scale to the maximum size suitable for printing. And sometimes you may need to print multiple models at the same time. You can lay out the models here, and hold Ctrl and A at the same time, select all models. And then you can arrange the layout according to the X or Y axis. Then on the right is the setting of the printing parameters. For most models, you can directly choose to use the default parameters, but we will also introduce you to the role of each parameter so that you can set the best parameters according to your own model. Okay, the first is a calculator, a reference that helps you calculate how much it will cost to print this model. Alright, let's get to the more important part. First, you'll have to select the desired layer height. We recommend going for 0.05 mm for most prints. And here is a slice file, and on the left you can see the printed pattern of each layer, and then solidify the resin through layer by a layer exposure to form a complete model. So you can choose 0.05 mm or lower layer height according to your needs. Of course, if you need higher precision, you can try a lower layer height, and a lower the layer height. The higher the print quality and the longer it takes to complete a single print, Okay, then the normal exposure time is the amount of time that each layer is exposed to the printer's UV light during the printing process. And if you lower the layer height, you also need shorten the exposure time appropriately. Take monochrome LCD printers as examples, there is a recommended parameter. And if the setting was set too high, the printed model will become wider than expected and a lot of details will be lost. On the other hand, if the exposure time is too short, the model will become narrower or even unable to form. And another two points to be mentioned is that the type of resin and printing temperature will also affect the exposure time. Different manufacturers resins may have different requirements for exposure time. So try follow the manufacturer guidelines, but be prepared to make necessary adjustments if needed. And if the room temperature is low, the exposure time can be increased appropriately. Okay, let's check the off time, it means after an exposure. The UV light turns off and the build plate lifts, peels, and rests at the set layer height at the bottom of your dot before the light comes on again for the next exposure cycle. We also recommend you to use the default parameters, about 1 second 3 second, and the longer your off time, the longer your resin has to settle and make room for the next layer. So, if you need to print tooth models and accessories with accurate size, you can add the off time appropriately. And when you are printing a large model, you can also increase the off time to allow the excess resin to stably flow back into the tank, which can increase the chance of successful printing. And for more viscous resin or in a colder environment, you can also add the off time. Then, bottom exposure time, it's similar to exposure time, but only applying to the first few layers or bottom layers of your 3D prints. Sometimes the bottom of the model is not well stuck to the platform or the model is too difficult to remove, you can try to adjust the value here. And our recommended value is the default 40 seconds, the longer your bottom exposure time, the better grip this first layer has on the build platform, so if it is a smaller model, you can try to start from 30 seconds. If the model does not stick to the platform well, you can try to add 10 seconds, on the contrary, if the stick is too strong, you can reduce it. Note. Sometimes the model does not stick to the platform because it is not leveled properly, so please check it. Okay, let's check the bottom layer. These layers ensure strong adhesion to the build plate and help in building a successful 3D model. And we recommend you build 4 to 10 bottom layers. And sometimes increasing your bottom layer count is a way of improving your print adhesion when your models are not sticking to the printing platform properly. 
but please do not add too much. Too much bottom layers will increase the tensile force of FEP film. Well, the following three parameters generally do not need to be modified. We recommend using the default values. The lift distance means the height to which the build platform will rise. And the optimal value would be somewhere between 6 and 8 millimeters. If the value is too small, the model is highly likely to not come off the bottom of the VAD at all. So if you are printing a larger and heavier model, you can try to reduce the speed or just use the default value. The Z retreat speed is also the same, generally do not modify, just use the default value. And about anti-alias, aliasing is the staircase effect that occurs when diagonal or curved lines or borders are drawn on raster displays consisting of square or rectangular pixels. Anti-aliasing is to smooth object edges by reducing the number of lines and vertical artifacts you see on your 3D printed model. Photon Workshop provides anti-aliasing function with 1, 2, 4, 8 level. So if you want a smoother surface, you can try to increase the level of anti-aliasing. Okay, this is the first part, we will talk about these in the next video and if you still have any doubts or have any suggestions about the video, you can comment below. Thanks for watching. Okay, the first is to check the model. Normally, after you select the model in the printing area, the surface of the model is all blue. If the model exceeds the printing area, you can shrink the model or move the model to the printing area, but if the model is like this, the surface is damaged or the inside and outside are reversed. It means that the normal of the model is reversed. Such as TL files will cause printing failure. You can try to repair it with some softwares such as Magix. Okay, when placing the model, we will choose bottom printing and floating printing. If the model has a suitable placement plane, like this, you can consider bottom printing. Here is a function to help you attach the model to the bottom. Click here, and then click the corresponding surface. It will turn great, so that we can ensure that the bottom of the model is close to the platform. And if the model is not suitable for bottom printing, you need to raise the model at least 5 millimeters. Okay, then, we will use the simplest way to introduce support. Here, you can see that there are three default supports, light, medium and heavy. You can choose to use different supports according to the different volumes of the model. Okay, let's check the differences between them. You can see that the main differences among the three supports are the diameter and the thickness of the bottom. You can change the support by modifying these two parameters. Top and middle diameters. Of course, you can also set the appropriate support by modifying these two parameters. And if you want to make the support easier to remove from the model surface, you can add the first support in some parts. The middle diameter is larger than the top diameter. In addition, the thicker the middle of the support is, the stronger the overall stability of the support is, and it will be easier to print the model successfully. And it is important to note that if the top is larger than the middle, this may cause the support to break and the print to fail. So don't do this. Next, check the top part. The contact diameter is only valid when you select a spherical contact point, but we do not recommend using sphere, which will leave obvious holes in the surface of the model after you remove the support. And for better surface quality, we usually recommend that you reduce the contact depth. By observing the inside of the model, we can see that the support has entered into it. When the contact depth is too deep, will cause unsightly small pits on the surface of the model after the support is removed. Then another parameter that needs to be manually adjusted for the support is the thickness of the bottom. We recommend that the bottom thickness is 0.4 mm to 0.6 mm. The thickness that is too thick may not be as adhesive as the thin one, and unnecessary resin will be wasted, so you can manually adjust the bottom thickness here. Then there is the raft. The raft here means the entire bottom raft after adding all the supports. Just like this, we usually recommend the default. You can also try other shapes. 
OK, most of the time, we will use auto support. Click fill. The software will add auto support for you. But to get a successful model, you need to manually adjust some parameters, for example. Now you can find that after selecting auto support, the number of supports is not enough. Then we can expand the recognition area by increasing the angle of support, and it is recommended to modify it to more than 60%. And you can see that the red area has increased. This is the recommended area to add support, and then you can also adjust the density of the support to add more supports. OK, after the modification, fill again, this time the number of supports is enough. However, for small and medium sized models, adding medium supports is enough, and also remember to adjust the contact depth. And here, you can also choose tree support. Because of its special structure, it can help us save resin. OK, you can see that its top will be separated like a tree branch, and the number of supports will be less. OK, here we can make a comparison with the support of ordinary shape. And you can see that the number of main supports of tree supports is less, so sometimes you can try to use tree support. Usually, it is impossible to avoid using support structures for overhangings and bridges. But for some simple models, you don't need to add support, how to judge. You only need to use this method, drag here, and observe whether the model is completely generated. Just like the cat on the left, all parts are complete, so it doesn't need to add support. And look at the model on the right, drag it. You can see its mouth is suspended and separated from the main body, so you need to add support to the mouth. And you can add support manually here. Don't worry. Later we will explain how to add support in detail. OK, observe again, so that the printing should be no problem. OK, now we will show how to add support through actual cases. And these two are small and medium models. We can easily see that this model is not suitable for bottom printing, so we need to raise the Z axis value by more than 5 mm. And for small models, you can directly use light support, adjust the contact depth and ensure that the bottom thickness is not too high, then select automatic support. If the number of supports is not enough, you can increase the angle and density to adjust repeatedly until you get enough supports. OK, next is a larger Thanos model. The same, raised as the axis value at least 5 mm. And we can choose to add little support to it, and similarly, reduce the contact depth and the height of the bottom thickness. And in order to ensure that the support can better hold the model, we can manually add some heavy supports at the bottom. So you can remove some of the supports at the bottom, and then add some heavy supports. This method is suitable for many models, you can add different supports in different parts. Sometimes automatic support may not be the best solution, and you need to adjust several times to get a perfect slice file. Then for the support on the face, because there is no dangling part of the face, we can manually delete it. It will affect the printing effect. Then we can use the previous method to check whether the model has any dangling parts. Also, the placement angle of the model is also important. A proper angle can help you get higher print quality. Here are two models of female heads, we put them at opposite angles, and then see which angle is more suitable. According to the previous method, adding automatic support to it. Okay, you can see that a lot of support has been added to the face of the model. Then let's take a look at the model with its head down. What kind of support will it get? The support is added, you can see that the face of the character is not added to the support, and the support on the right side is much less than the left side, which will save more time in resin. So the placement angle on the right side will be better, so a principle we should follow is to try to make the size of the exposure area of each layer tend to be the same, or slowly change. And also place the important side up, such as the character's face, the display surface of models. 
and generally, 30 degrees to 40 degrees is the ideal placement angle, but it should be adjusted according to the specific model. The same, according to the previous method of judging whether the model is suspended or not, we can manually remove the support around the neck, and then we can add some heavier support to the support point to ensure that the support can better hold the model. Next, let's add support for the large model. First, we recommend to hollow the model, which can save resin and printing time. Here, we can see that the inside of the model looks gray, which proves that the model is solid. Ok, let's hollow the model. Click this icon, here you can fill in the thickness of the shell, we recommend 2mm or more. And it's better not to choose to fill. Click OK. Now we can see that the inside is red, which means it is hollow. Then we need to punch holes. Click here, you can see a lot of parameters, shapes, diameters, but the most important thing is the inner extent length. You need to make sure it is larger than the hollow thickness you just set. Let us make a comparison here. The length of the hole above is 1.7 mm. The hole below is 2 mm, and the hollow thickness we just set is 2 mm. Ok, you can see that the hole above, there is no penetration. If there is no hole or the hole is not penetrated, the internal resin will not flow out and solidify. For a long time, the internal and external pressure and temperature difference will be caused, and the model will be broken. This is one of the reasons why some people say that the model is cracked. After the model is hollow, you need to add support to the interior of the model. There is hollow mesh at the top of the fill icon. Check it, then click fill, and you can see that support will be added inside. So for large models, you can follow these steps to add support. And you can also choose the info when hollowing, but we recommend using auto support to add support to the interior of the model, which will save resin. Then, there is a great feature here. After you have completed all the settings, you can save the scene file. If you want to adjust some parameters, or modify the support, you can open the scene file and modify it again, while the slice file cannot be modified. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching.